Good morning and welcome to our Turnbull Custom Guns YouTube channel. Today we have an interesting Mauser. It's a Siamese Mauser and they have a very unique trigger guard setup compared to other Mausers and feeding ramp which make them kind of a favorite for chambering in 4570 and other rimmed cartridges similar to that. <clears throat> this is one a customer brought in, and uh, it is in 4570. It's got a McGowan barrel on it, which is a great barrel. But all in all, um, it's not a bad rifle. Uh, great checkering on it. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to check it for headspace um, and give it an overall look and evaluate for our customer. So let's do the headspace check. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is, of course, make sure we're empty. And we're going to lock this caulking block back by putting the safety in the up position. And take our bolt out. Whenever you check the head spacing, you want to make sure your bolt is free of the extractor and firing pin and anything else that would hinder the free movement of the bolt because you want to make sure it is sitting on your head space gauge so we're gonna remove our firing pin assembly and we're gonna remove our extractor on a mauser it's nice because you turn it past the top of that groove and squeeze on the extractor it pops off we're going to leave this on here uh, too much stretching that kind of makes the bolt bind a little bit so unless you have to take it off i don't you do want to make sure that when it comes through this area that it doesn't rotate because it can get stuck in there so we have two gauges we have a go gauge that we use to make sure that the chamber is deep enough. And we have a no-go gauge that we use to make sure the chamber is not too deep. So we want it to close. We want the bolt handle to close on a go gauge. And we don't want it to close on a no-go. That means the chamber is too deep. On this particular gun, the face of the bolt is quite tight to the rim, so it takes a little bit of fiddling. We've also made sure that the chamber is very clean. We don't want a piece of dirt in there giving us a false reading. So we'll make sure that's... there we go. So as you can see, our bolt doesn't fully close on our go gauge which means it's a tight chamber, a little tighter than what the SAMI specs say that it should be. Sometimes this will happen if somebody uses a actual 4570 case for their chambering because um, it's a little thinner than the SAMI specs. So this here, we already can tell, is a very tight chamber. We could try the the no-go gauge in there, but if it doesn't close on a go gauge, we know it won't close if, on a no-go for sure. So, there we go. We'll take our gauge out. So we've determined it has a tight gauge. Our bolt has no firing pin in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try around in there. And again, no firing pin. There's no way it can go off. Um, still I recommend it being pointed in a safe direction. If you have a dummy round, that is the best way to do it. But um, we should be able to see if this will close on a full round. Again, no firing pin. There's no way this is going to make that round go off. Otherwise, I wouldn't use a live round. But 
it closes all the way on a 4570 case. So I'm not really concerned about this particular gun. Um, we know it has a tight chamber. We know it will close on a factory round. Um, if we were shooting it and seeing signs of uh, overpressurization, we might want to revisit this. But where these headspace on the rim, I'm not as concerned about it as if it was a rimless case that had spaces on the uh, neck, basically. Because if that's tight, you can have your uh, some excessive chamber pressures, but not so much with a rimmed cartridge. But there we go. I think uh, I'll report to the customer that the chamber's tight, and so they're aware of it. And uh, if they have any issues... We can always go in there and open it up a little bit with a hand reamer. It's probably only about a half a thousandth to a thousandth off from the Sammy spec. So you have it.